called up by none other than Sir Bobby Robson. Um, so your career at this point had gone full circle from being let go as a young player at Ipswich to then being called up to represent your country. I'm really interested to know like, what, what, what did Sir Bobby say to you when you first got that call up? Well, well first and foremost, Bobby didn't really want me to leave Ipswich, um, but there was no pathway for me. Mm-hmm. So, so what does he do? Stockpile players like they do today? You know, restrict players? Or do you cut them loose and wish them well um, and hope your path crosses again in the future in a positive way? And, and that's what, what Bobby did to me as a 16-year-old. Um, you know, he had nothing but encouragement for me. Um, and I think it actually helped the fact that Bobby Robson knew me and my parents because Bobby, when he ran Ipswich Football Club, knew, knew everybody and everything. So from the age of 11 to 16, he saw me grow, he saw me develop, he knew what my character was. Um, you know, he knew my background, he knew what my parents had brought me up to be like. Um, and then he saw me make my debut against his club for Brighton. And he saw me score my first goal for Brighton away against Ipswich at Portman Road when we got a 1-1 draw, for example. Um, and I think he mentions it in his book. Um, I'd actually been out injured for, for Spurs, um, having been in the England squad, and it was heading up to Mexico 86. And I got back in the Spurs team fit again. And he came to watch Birmingham Spurs play. Um, and he said off the back of that, he knew that I was back and would, would use me in the England team. And then we played the Rouse Cup final at Wembley, England against Scotland in the summer of 86, prior to going to Mexico. And the England squad hadn't been named at the time. Um, and I was on the bench. Peter Reid picks up a bit of an injury in midfield. So I replaced Peter Reid in midfield. Terry Butcher got a blow on the head and had to go off for 10 minutes. So I slotted in at centre half until he came back. And then Scotland were bombing forward with Richard Goff at right back. And they were knocking these long diagonals above Kenny Sanson at left back. So they hooked Kenny Sanson off and played me at left back to deal with the aerial threat. And having won the Rouse Cup, oh, there you go. I did win something else. Won the Rouse Cup, beat (laughs) Scotland at Wembley. Thank goodness for that. Um, and as we're walking off the pitch, Bobby Robson came up to me and he just said, you are useful. You're going to be useful to me. And I knew at that moment he would have me in the England squad to go to, to the, the World Cup in Mexico um, because 22-man um, squad, as it then was, only five subs on the bench, not everybody, only five subs on the bench and you could use three. So I was a perfect substitute for him to, to have. But when he called me up into the, um, the England squad for the first time, he just shook my hand, welcomed me and said, you deserve to be here, Gary. No reference to anything in the past. And I think that's correct as well, because, you know, what, what has the past got to do with the present? Some people would argue that it affects the present, but, you know, there was, you know, oh, all I could say to Sir Bobby was, thank you. You know, you're the England manager. You've picked me to play for my country. And guess what? That's another boyhood dream that has come to fruition. 22-man squad, Gary. Still two players called Gary Stevens in that squad, though. You get on that flight to Mexico. Taste of a major tournament. I mean, what are your memories? We've got the Argentina game. Two sides of Diego Maradona, the hand of God and a player who was almost divine in one match. I mean, watching that unfold, how outraged were you? What was the, what was the atmosphere in the squad like afterwards? Well, I, I think that Mexico 86 World Cup for me, I could talk about it for a week in total. Um, so much happened. Yes, there were two Gary Stevenses. There was also a Trevor Steven in the squad as well. Uh, the commentators loved all that chaos. Um, I'd played in the previous game. I'd come on as sub for Peter Reid against Paraguay. Um, was Reedy going to be fit or not? He was deemed fit to play against Argentina. And that's who Bobby Robson went with, possibly partly because, again, I was his ideal substitute to have. 
um, because I play in different slots. Um, You know, the the hand of God goal itself um, in the Azteca Stadium, the dugout, and it was a dugout, you were sat kind of almost below pitch level and your eyes, you couldn't quite see the far side of the pitch. Um, you know, you're maybe 10, 15 yards back from the touch line. So that diagonal to where the handball took place was, was maybe 70, 80 yards for us. Um, and as it loops up in the air from Stevie Hodge, um, we're all saying, come on in, Schultz, deal with it. And he goes to punch it, which, fair enough, punch it rather than catch it. And, and all of a sudden, as Maradona challenges him, the ball goes past Schultz and bobbles into the back of the net. And, you know, our first reaction is what's gone wrong? Because we clearly couldn't see, I couldn't see from where I was exactly what had happened. Then when you see Terry Butcher and Terry Fennick chasing the referee and gesticulating that it's a handball, then it's a handball, isn't it? Clearly, we're now ranting and raving it's a handball and, you know, we're into the official nearest to our dugout about it. Um, And then I, I suppose the the wonder goal you you know, almost sat there and applauded after he'd scored it. Um, because it was sheer genius. Um, there was after the game, there was there was players who from the England squad wanted to get into the Argentina changing room and, and have a, a sort out. Uh, there was England players who were inconsolable. I felt a little bit detached from it, to be honest with you, because I would number one, I was disappointed I didn't play in the game leading up to the game, and this, this might have ended up with me spending the rest of my life in hospital, but Bobby Robson and Don Howe spoke to me about maybe man-marking Diego Maradona. Um, in the end, they went against that thought process, and we didn't man-mark him. Um, I think my head might have been spinning after 90 minutes of that. Um, so, yeah, mixed emotions in many ways. It was you know, the end of the World Cup for for me, for all of us, for the fans. Um, Disappointment, um, felt that we had been cheated, conned out of it. If you spin it round the other way, if Gary Lineker had done it at the other end of the park, for example, um, we would have probably patted him on the back, wouldn't we? Um, So you have to live with it. I believe, and certainly until quite recently, you know, Peter Shilton, you know, doesn't have a good word for Diego Maradona. Um, and funnily enough, before the World Cup, Diego Maradona came to White Hart Lane and played for Spurs in Ozzy Ardiles's testimonial against Milan. Oh. Um, and so, so we'd all seen Maradona pretty much close up at White Hart Lane. So, yeah, we, well, we knew he was a genius anyway. Um, but I, I don't know, you just have to move on, you know, and okay, I played in the previous game against Paraguay and I, that was my seventh cap and I never played for England again. No, not because um, of, of that, it was because soon after that, uh, you know, a, a run of injuries kind of caught up with me a little bit and other players come into the reckoning for England and I just wasn't able to get myself back in there.